wild. Look at me literally collecting dust all over these trucks because they've been here. 24% interest on a vehicle if you have poor or subprime credit. That is, I would argue, borderline criminal. I'll tell you what, if they're going to sell it, they're going to have to maybe rethink that line right there. Because the Mustang looks gargantuan <laughs> compared to this Mazda here. So I was at this exact CarMax about a month and a half ago. And as I walk around this dealership lot, I can tell you that the vast majority of the vehicles that were here a month and a half ago are still here. And guess what? To add insult to injury, they have not dropped the prices just yet. So if CarMax is going to be competitive, they need to have been slashing their prices. I'm talking 10, 15% off, maybe 20% off. As I look at these vehicles here on this lot, they are wildly overpriced. And today I'm going to show you just a few prime examples of that. So we have so many different vehicles on this lot that cost about the same brand new as what they're asking for them used. This vehicle here is a 2022 Ford Maverick XL. $31,000 is how much they want for it at 17,000 miles. This vehicle brand new, just barely over that price tag. Pretty crazy that they still want that for now a two year old vehicle. So I can confidently tell you that every single one of these mid-sized trucks here has been on the lot with the exception of one. There's one new vehicle here. These, these were here last month, here last month. We looked at that one in particular last month, but this one here, this one's new. So we have an electric line metallic Toyota Tacoma. This is a 2023 Tacoma Tier D Sport. Let me show you how much they want for it. So access cab, not the full crew cab here. So $36,000 with 19,000 miles on it. Nowadays, you can buy a brand new one of these from Toyota pretty easily while still getting four to $5,000 below MSRP, making that price tag right there a bit ridiculous. So trucks are definitely struggling the most. We see that in any dealership lot that you go to, you're gonna see a whole sea of trucks. CarMax is no different. The sad thing about this lineup here, if you recall from my previous videos even, nine out of 10 of these trucks right here were here a month and a half ago. They're just not moving their inventory. But when we look at the prices, they also haven't dropped it. The new one to the group is this 2023 Solar Octane Toyota Tundra Tier D Pro. Let's give a peek at how much they want for it. So they want $68,000 and it has 32,000 miles on it. That is absolutely absurd, okay? So let me paint a picture for you. So I know values of Tundras very well. I've owned a few of these. I've owned a 23 Tundra Tier D Pro. You can buy a brand new 2024 right now easily by getting a few thousand dollars below MSRP. These are, you know, they're losing popularity right now. People are kind of catching on to the fact that they really are wildly overpriced, unfortunately, for what you get and what it is. So the brand new MSRP on this back in 2023 was $72,000, $73,000. That's MSRP. So they only dropped it a few thousand dollars in price, but for 32,000 miles, that's a bit absurd if you ask me. So here's a few more very familiar vehicles. We have the Forerunners here that we looked at last time around. This one here, we looked at the sticker if you recall. And would you look at that? They have not dropped the price at all. They still want $44,000 for this 21 Toyota 4Runner Trail Special Edition with 32,000 miles on it. So you, I would argue you can confidently walk into a dealership right now and you can easily get one of these for about $45,000. After a couple little small discounts, get a brand new one with zero miles on it. Not to mention, you're probably not gonna get aced with that kind of interest rate <laughs> if you buy it. So 24% interest on a vehicle if you have poor or subprime credit that is i would argue borderline criminal to, to pay that kind of an interest rate on any type of loan let alone forty four thousand dollars you'll quickly spend seventy thousand dollars on this forty four thousand dollar vehicle pretty crazy so we have the whole lineup of trucks that are just collecting dust at the moment we've talked about this we are continuously seeing the same exact trucks here Wow, look at me literally collecting dust all over these trucks because they've been here. They've been here for at least 45 days, the majority of these that I, that I can see, that I recognize anyway, but I just find it baffling. I would just hope that CarMax, if they want to try to salvage their company, salvage it, I mean, appease their stakeholders, they need to be slashing, right? They need to be getting huge discounts and incentivizing their vehicles. Perhaps even, I know it's a little out of their hands, but I do think that they have options 
to lower the terrible interest rates for their customers. All right, if they're gonna go through CarMax and actually try to finance their loan for their vehicles, they have means to drop those rates. Currently, the rates are just absurd. They're astronomical. And if they're gonna hit people with high price tags on them, the least they could do is drop the rate to help them out a little bit. So I'll give you a reminder there. That's what we're working with. Very good credit. You're still looking at 9% interest rate and 18% for fair credit, which that's where most Americans are. Remember, we looked at that study recently. The average um, credit score right now is 716. That's gonna land you right in that category for the most part. You might get a little bit less than that, but you're looking at 18%. And 18% on $45,000, that is no joke. That is stuff that will haunt you for years. And I almost skipped a couple forerunners here. We have a forerunner runner tier off-road. These are a dime a dozen nowadays, $42,000 for a 2019. This is pre the infotainment upgrade, the, the pre tech upgrade for this forerunner here. And it has 31,000 miles, pretty low for the year, let's be honest. But that price tag, gosh, just spend a few thousand dollars more and get one brand new. Like I mentioned before, I have a buddy who just bought a brand new 2024 forerunner tier D off-road premium. He just spent 48,000 or $47,000 for it. I'd much rather do that. So I think we can all agree that the market is moving much faster than CarMax, right? The market is dropping significantly and swiftly, whereas CarMax is just too slow to, to keep up, right? And that puts them at a huge disadvantage. You know, we see it with all these vehicles on this lot just being wildly, wildly overpriced. They're not moving their inventory. And also we kind of see some pretty grim indicators you know, behind the curtain, if you will. We're seeing, you know, stock traders drop, dump their stocks for CarMax, even within the last week. If you kind of check out some recent headlines, people are dropping their CarMax stocks. And it is kind of like on the heels of room shutting down. It's on the heels of these large, you know, large dealerships shutting down and closing their doors, like we saw in Pacific Northwest with Northwest Motorsports. People are starting to see the writing on the wall, and if you're not fast enough to keep up with the moving market, they may just find themselves underwater totally. Now, you cannot go to a Nissan dealership without seeing a million of these new Frontiers. I say new, but obviously the, the refresh version of the Frontier. They're absolutely covering every single Nissan lot, and they always tend to have a giant piece of paper hanging from the, the mirror there that says 0% interest rate, or 1.9 interest rate, or $5,000 off. So I mean, they're wildly, wildly being uh, discounted across the nation right now. And here we have a 22. Frontier Pro 4X, 16,000 miles on it, $39,000. I would argue that you can buy the same exact truck brand new right now and get a stellar interest rate on top of that for right around that same price, maybe around 40,000. I would much rather do that. Let's peek over here for front two because we have a, a Jeep over here, Jeep Gladiator, Willys edition. Jeep has the highest lot times right now, meaning these Jeeps are just sitting stagnant, collecting dust on Jeep dealerships across the nation with 132 days being the average lot time. 132 days, that is insane. We're talking, what is that, four months? That is absolutely ridiculous. So let's see how much they want for this one. $34,000 for a 2022 Gladiator Willys, 39,000 miles on it. I just, I can't fathom anybody walking in here in the right mind without doing a little bit of homework and buying a Jeep Gladiator from CarMax, especially with their interest rates on a used vehicle. I just can't, I can't fathom it. So we have continuously seen an uptick of how long vehicles have been sitting on lots across the US. Last month, we were looking at 70 to 80 days as the average. 70 to 80 days was the average amount of time that a vehicle would sit on a dealership lot within the US. Now, we're teetering up to 80, 85. So just over a month, 45 days, we've teetered up an average of 10 to 15 more days on a lot. That is absurd. So I believe I found the cheapest vehicle on this CarMax lot, and it is this Kia here. Let me show you what they have. In the window so it's a 2012 kia sereno lx thirteen thousand dollars hundred eight thousand miles again they, they may as well try to give this thing away for free if they're going to try to move it so having owned a minivan myself i do have a soft spot for minivans they're perfect for families however what isn't perfect are the price tags on these ones so this is a 2021 honda odyssey lx 
you know, I guess it's kind of, I'm sending a good and bad signal right now, okay? The good signal is we have a 21 Odyssey priced at $1,000, $1,200 below its original MSRP. Original MSRP on this particular LX here, $31,000 and some change back in 2021. And now here we are in 2024, three years later, and they're trying to get only just a thousand bucks less with 32,000 miles. So it's good, of course. I mean, historically speaking, Hondas, they do pretty good in resale, right? But I think we can all agree that that is a staggering price on a used vehicle that's three years old in today's current market. So I might have a glimmer of hope. I spoke to a gentleman that works here just a few minutes ago and what he told me was, although the window stickers do say 9%, they have generally been able to get closer to 6% right now in-house for CarMax loans. Uh, I know it's not great by any means, but it is better than 9%. So that was at least a positive thing to hear from them. But again, that is with, you know, 800 up credit score, excellent top tier credit, they could probably land you that. He did also say, that if you're able to buy a used vehicle and be in the single digits in general, you should chalk it up to a win. And I hate, I hate that he's right. Right now in today's market, if you can get a single digit interest rate on your vehicle, you're in a good spot. So this right here is the untamed family segment. We have really <laughs> kind of graduated to, to full size SUVs. To be fair, this one like here, this GMC Yukon Denali is not the XL version. And we've really come to appreciate our ESV Escalade for that reason, having that larger cargo space beyond the third row. But let's look at the sticker here. We got 2022 GMC Yukon Denali, $78,000. You know, regardless of the mileage, we got 13,000 miles, not a lot, but still like compared to brand new for a brand new 2024 Denali, that is steep. You know, it needs to be at least, you know, high 60s, high 60s, maybe I'll give them 70 for it. But like this is just a bit out of reach for what it is right now in the current market. Now on more than one occasion, my family and I, we've considered buying a Lexus GX460. I love this for very similar reasons to why I love the 4Runner, body on frame design, a very rugged platform with a naturally aspirated V8, which is awesome, and it's a dying breed. We know that the GX550 is already gonna replace that with a twin turbo V6. $57,000 they want for this 2022 GX460 Premium. I can confidently tell you that you can buy a brand new one. Well, let me start for, for starters. MSRP on a 2023 GX460. There's still a lot on dealership lots right now, so they're very much available, still brand new. You know, MSRP is 65,000 and some change for the premium, okay? You can easily get five, six, seven, maybe even $8,000 off of MSRP right now. So many of you have commented on my videos telling me that. You said, hey, I just swooped up a GX460, a brand new one for 8,000 off, whatever. So many of you have commented on that on my 4Runner videos in particular. So I know you can get a pretty good deal on a brand new one of these and not spend $57,000 for one that's two years old and 17,000 miles on it. And we've talked about it before, the luxury SUV segment has historically suffered the most right here. This is a 2019 Mercedes-Benz GLE. You're not going to be able to see it. Probably not. GLE 43 AMG Coupe. They want $48,000 for it. I can tell you MSRP back in 2019 was $71,000 and some change. Right, so what, you got about a $23,000, $24,000 drop on this as it is. I would argue it needs to be low 40s if they're actually going to move that inventory right now based on just a quick Google search nationwide. They need to be competitive with it. Let's pick at this one. I haven't seen this one yet. A 2018 Mercedes-Benz GLE AMG Coupe, $46,000, 60,000 miles on this one. So a little bit less mileage on the other one, but about the same price. I gotta admit though, they do look pretty sleek. I kinda like these. It would never work for our family of 45 kids though. <laughs> so I love how people always refer to this particular Mercedes as the Mercedes that nobody really asked for. <laughs> so this is a 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB 250. 23,000 miles on it and they want 31 grand. I'll tell you what, if they're gonna sell it, they're gonna have to maybe rethink that line right there. So over here in the Audi lineup, all these vehicles have been here for over a month and a half at this point, to include this RS5 that looks pretty sleek. If I recall, it was a 2019? 2019 RS5, and yes, that is exactly how much they wanted for a month and a half ago. They need to be competitive. They need to be dropping that price if they're gonna to try to move this thing. 
So I'm very curious to see what they want for these two BMW X5s here. We'll start with the cooler looking one anyway. What you guys don't know is when I was stationed in Italy, I actually was super, super close to buying a brand new, at the time, 2017 BMW X5 M. Happy I peeled off because historically speaking, they lose value extremely fast, even though they're a ton of fun. This one here is a 2020 BMW X5 M50i with 15,000 miles and $63,000. And unfortunately, I don't, I don't know the MSRP off the top of my head, but I can guarantee you it was quite a bit more than that. But here they are, slashing those prices, and they're not moving. So they need to go the extra mile. Let's look at this one here, another X5. And $36,000 for a 2019 BMW X5 xDrive 40i with 53,000 miles on it. Now, part of me actually feels bad for Jeep because just the other day, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I posted that brand new 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xe, and it had $17,000 or $16,000 off of MSRP. They are, they are actively slashing the crud out of their pricing right now to move inventory, because right now, like I mentioned, they really are in the roughest shape for any manufacturer within the US. They're just totally piling up and collecting dust. They want $30,000 for this 2018 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport S with 32,000 miles on it. I don't know. They need to be wicked, wicked competitive on their Jeep Wranglers in particular if they're going to move them. Let's look at this other one. Look at that. It's just so, so much dirt and grime and dust just piling up on these things in places that they probably shouldn't either. All right, so... 2018 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport S, just like that other one, $26,000, but with a little bit more miles, right? 57,000 miles on it. Yeah, I find it wild that they're just collecting dust. And as they sit on the lots, we've talked about it briefly before, but what is it doing? You know, everything is just kind of getting stale. You know, nothing's being lubricated in these vehicles. It's not moving. Vehicles are built to be driven. They're meant to be driven. As you sit them just here for months on end without driving them, problems gremlins start popping up issues with these vehicles start to arise that's what you commonly hear as lot rot we're seeing it right now firsthand here and the lineup of jeeps goes on and on and on at this carmax <laughs> seemingly seemingly non-stop oh and we got one coming in here yeah you get the hint it keeps going now, historically speaking, Toyota RAV4s generally sell in a heartbeat. You know, throughout the pandemic in particular, these had huge wait lists on them. We got a Venza here, another RAV4, another RAV4, another RAV4. We got several down there. Let's peek at these on this end. We got a 2022, this is with that facelift, 2022 Toyota RAV4 LE for $31,000, 5,000 miles. It's almost like an untamed individual owned this for a couple seconds, but, but still. Yeah, right now, you are able to get a little bit off at dealerships, especially for that particular trim, right? A little bit less desirable there. Let's pick at this one here. It is a 2019 RAV4 XLE Premium. It's a little bit better of a trim, about the same price, $30,000, 40,000 miles more. Again, that is just too steep right now in the current market with that kind of mileage. And then we have unique examples like this. And for the record, I'm actually beginning to hate how much I like Kia the look of them <laughs> i don't think i'll ever buy one but they are starting to look pretty good so this here is a 2021 kia k5 gt line msrp on this back in 2021 if you can believe it or not was 25,500. so this is kind of one of those unique rare examples of you know because of msrp hikes over the last couple of years it's kind of served to their benefit because if you're going to buy a brand new one right now it's about thirty thousand dollars even for a brand new one of these and well the color does look good so Kind of wild. They want $1,500 more than what the brand new MSRP was on this. Kind of wild. And I wonder if I'm missing something because right here is a 2023 Kia K5 GT line and they want a brand new MSRP for it. Again, you can maybe pull that kind of stuff during the pandemic, but right now they just can't get away with doing that, unfortunately. And I kid you not, I just walked by someone looking over at an Outback down here saying, let's just get the new one for $2,500 or more. I'm not even kidding you. So kind of an indicator right there of people are 
just opening up Google, doing a few Google searches and doing a little bit of homework and you'll quickly see that unfortunately, CarMax right now is just wildly overpriced. So $27,000 for this 2020 Outback here with 15,000 miles. So kind of wild, we're already seeing the new redesigned Honda Accords hit the lot here. This one in particular is a 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport L for $31,000 with 20,000 miles on it. 20 minutes up the road, I can go to another Honda dealership and buy a brand new one right now for sale on their lot for $33,400. A brand new, same exact trim, a hybrid Sport L, same exact thing. And I'll tell you what, on new pricing, you get much better interest rates than that right there. Now the thing that Toyota Camrys have always had going for them is very, very good pricing, right? They've always been very affordable and just a smart, reliable vehicle to buy. Excellent fuel economy. It's just a very wise purchase historically. But as if you've owned a Toyota Camry, you know for a fact that within the last just two years, there was a tremendous spike in their MSRPs. Bigger than, I would argue, much bigger for the Camry than, than other Toyota vehicles across the lineup. So this one here, $24,000 for a 2021 with 32,000 miles on it. You know, these have benefited greatly due to those MSRP price hikes. You know, the values of these have sustained extremely well because of that. I tell you what, 18 year old Untamed would be hyperventilating at the sight of this World Rally Blue Subaru WRX. Okay, okay, 22 year old Untamed. Okay, 30 year old Untamed. Okay, just caught my breath. So this here is a 2022 Subaru WRX with 4,000 miles and they want $30,000 for it. Kind of wild when you look at the new pricing. Now I can't help but wonder if CarMax is gonna find themselves in a very similar position to, to Vroom, right? Vroom just shut their virtual doors the other day and we're seeing so many other large dealerships having to close. And I wonder if CarMax is gonna be able to make the drastic enough moves to stay in business. So what happens next for CarMax? You know, do they do what they've done before? Do they begin to start cutting a bunch of their employees just to kind of make ends meet across the board. You know, we see the stock market coming down drastically. Even just since Room went out of business, we saw a pretty notable downward tick for CarMax. So CarMax is a little bit more resilient, I would argue. You know, they got the you know, in-person purchase method. I mean, they're pretty, have a pretty well-known presence online as well, whereas Room was totally online, just like Carvana. But I do wonder what is next for them because they will need to make a pretty drastic change to their business model and their approach if they're gonna remain competitive through 2024. So we talked about auto insurance premiums being record high, right? The average across the US right now is $2,542 for an annual full coverage insurance premium. And when you're talking vehicles like this here behind me, you know, Camaros, Challengers, Mustangs, that's where you're going to get beat up the most. And I think that is a big piece of why the largest number of repossessions that take place tend to be with these fun, sporty vehicles here, these sports cars. They're the first to get repoed. Now, having owned a BMW M3 myself, I see this BMW M5 here obviously is a ton of fun, a wicked fun European vehicle here. But maintenance costs on these tend to be an arm and a leg nowadays. They've, they've always been expensive, but they're going up and they're consistently going up along with everything there is. Between that and record high auto insurance premiums, I don't know. Personally, I would steer clear from something like this right now. So it looks like they have a new friend over here in the EV section at CarMax. Let's check out the pricing. So we of course got a Tesla. 2019 Model 3 long, or excuse me, standard range for $29,000, 36,000 miles on it. Tesla continues to cut their prices, you know, just to remain competitive. And thankfully, they get the luxury of doing that because they are a direct-to-consumer company, right? Over here, we have that forbidden Mustang Mach-E. And these, if you go to any Ford dealership right now, you will see at least 10 of them <laughs> just tucked in a corner because nobody's buying them. Yeah, you know, between all the other tax tax uh, benefits that you get from buying an EV and the government subsidies that we're likely going to restart here again just to continue to move them, now, even then they're still not worth it. But even then, a brand new one is dang near close to that $41,000 price tag. Let's go peek. Over here we got two more to look at. So we got that Jaguar that's been here for 45 days, as well as this 2019 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. They want $28,000 for this one in particular, and it has 41,000 miles on it. 
again, I do think that this section here in particular is going to grow even more in the coming weeks. Coming, coming months, this section here is going to expand outward into the primary lot. Now, I have heard pretty good things about these newer Miatas. Well, I guess Mi Miatas in general have just become a very fun autocross vehicle. And, well, I don't think I've ever looked at one immediately next to a Mustang, because a Mustang looks gargantuan <laughs> compared to this Mazda here. And even that Challenger looks gargantuan compared to the Mustang. Let's look at how much they want for this Mazda MX-5 Grand Touring. $28,000 with 16,000 miles on it. Honestly, I don't know if that is a great deal, but I do know that they are wildly popular, so I would probably expect to see this move, as it is a brand new addition here to the repo lineup. You know, the excess inventory is good for people who are paying cash. Obviously, if you have a trade-in and or taking loan out, that's where you're going to get beat up. Between the god-awful interest rates, that's going to be terrible in and of itself if you carry a loan through term. But also, if you have a trade-in, which, let's, let's face it, most of us do, if you have a trade-in, you're going to get a god-awful trade-in value for your vehicle. I mean, it's kind of, you know, catch-22, and it makes sense. These prices are going to have to fall tremendously, but that means your trade-in is also going to fall equally or more. Now, moments ago when I heard an individual say, let's just pay $2,500 more and get a brand new one, he was looking at this one here with his wife. And I just looked in the window, and I didn't see the sticker. So I wonder, I wonder if, if, they, if they might be buying it, perhaps. But uh, I'm not sure exactly what the price is, but he did say it was just $2,500 less than a brand new one. And if you're going to get aced with the terrible interest rates on a used vehicle, absolutely go buy brand new. I don't find the value in doing this. Look at that, another Tesla joining the pack, even while I'm here. How about that? Okay, this one's for my mom. My mom had a weird soft spot for this Buick Enclave. <laughs> so let's check it out and see how much they want for it. All right, OG Mrs. Untamed would have loved to have one of these Buick Enclaves. They want 17 grand and it has 84,000 miles on it. Now I imagine there's not too, too many people outside of my mom <laughs> looking for this particular enclave, but well, there you have it. Now the problem with GMC, well just domestic vehicles in general, is they tend to do facelifts every two years. They do some sort of redesign every two years that just, or two or three, that totally renders the old design old news, right? That makes it old news real fast and well you tend to see that in the pricing. The pricing drops drastically when the new version or new edition comes out. This one here is a 22 GMC Canyon AT4. This particular, it's only been a couple years and there already is a new <laughs> GMC Canyon out right now and they want $36,000 with 30,000 miles. No thanks. So we'll wrap up the video there today, guys. I do appreciate you watching, as always. If you enjoy this type of content, you know, let me know in the comment section. And at this point, I would really appreciate it if you would consider liking and subscribing, because I'll be providing a lot more of this content on other dealerships and other corporations beyond CarMax as we teeter into 2024. So I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, as always. Until next time.